हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इनफिनिटी लैन नीट चैनल दिस इज सुरेश फैकल्टी ऑफ केमिस्ट्री फ्रॉम इनफिनिटी लैन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मोस्ट अमेजिंग टॉपिक डाइपोल मूवमेंट दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक डाइपोल मूवमेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर नीट एग्जामिनेशन डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम केमिकल बॉन्डिंग यू मे एक्सपेक्ट टू गेट वन क्वेश्चन एंड ऑल्सो दिस डाइपोल मूवमेंट हैज एन इम्पॉर्टेंस इन द ऑर्गेनिक एज वेल एज इनऑर्गेनिक क्वेश्चन है सो लेट्स बिगिन वॉट इज ए डाइपोल मूवमेंट Let's talk about a heteroatomic molecule. Let's say hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen is bonded covalently with chlorine, so there is a mutual sharing of electron. There is a electron pair being shared between these two molecules because of the more electronegativity of this chlorine as compared to hydrogen. This electron is slightly migrated towards the chlorine. so that chlorine is going to get partially negative charge and hydrogen is going to get a partial positive charge so this molecule now it is getting a polar one negative pole and a positive pole there are two poles are being formed because of the moment of the bond so that we can say a dipole two poles are there due to bond movement that is what you can say a dipole moment so this dipole moment decides various factors in the properties of the molecule so let's talk about what is actual definition of the dipole moment so it is the product of the one of the charge on this dipole and the distance between these two atoms so that is what you call it as a dipole moment this dipole moment is given as mu is equal to charge on the one pole multiplied with distance between these two charges so this is the mathematical version of the dipole moment so the charge can be calculated on the basis of esu and the distance could be in the centimeters so it could be in the esu centimeters and is also said to be d by so d in the range of angstrom units 10 power minus 8 centimeters and uh, charge in the range of 10 power minus 10 esu and 1 d by is equal to 1 into 10 power minus 8 esu centimeters so this is the basic version of this dipole moment let us look into the application of the dipole moment where dipole moment of the molecular structure if a molecule is said to be a polar and a non polar is decided based on this dipole moment if the dipole moment is zero resultant dipole moment is zero so the molecule do not have any bond moment so it is said to be non polar similarly if the dipole moment resultant is not equal to zero it is said to be a polar molecule so the polar molecule almost nearly behaves like an ionic compound and when the molecule is taken just we have seen the hydrogen chloride the resultant dipole dipole moment hydrogen and the chlorine so the bond is moving towards more electronegative atom so that is indicated by a tail cut arrow mark so that is the implementation of the dipole moment if the dipole moment resultant is not equal to zero is polar dipole moment resultant is equal to zero that is said to be non polar moving forward let us talk about uh, the polyatomic molecule let's say a polyatomic molecule a central atom is bonded to b and uh, between these two let us say the bond moment is going to be mu1 and uh, a is bonded to c and it is bond moment is uh, mu2 and a and b are separated by bond angle called theta so the resultant dipole moment could be given as resultant dipole moment is equal to root over nu1 square plus nu2 square plus 2 nu1 nu2 cos theta dipole moment is a vector quantity so that we can apply the concept of vectors over here so as theta increases dipole moment decreases as theta increases dipole moment decreases and when theta is equal to 180 dipole moment resultant is going to be zero as theta decreases dipole moment is going to be increased so let's see various example the dipole moment of water is 1.84 how it is oxygen 
and a hydrogen and a hydrogen and the bond angle is going to be 104 when oxygen and oxygen and hydrogen is bonded oxygen is more electronegative so the bond movement with respect to, to this is like this hydrogen and oxygen oxygen is more electronegative so that resultant dipole movement for this water molecule is going to be like this this is what is what we call resultant dipole movement of the water similarly you can see in the carbon dioxide it is a linear structure in this linear structure c double bond o c double bond o so carbon and oxygen the dipole movement towards the oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon and uh, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon so two dipoles are in the opposite direction with the same magnet shoot resultant dipole movement for this is going to be cancelled it becomes zero simply apply vector concept so that you can do the best in this dipole movement moving towards uh, bf3 and uh, ch4 and uh, ccl4 the symmetrical molecule always do have the resultant dipole movement as zero like we can see bf3 molecule it is a planar trigonal geometry so it is a bf3 molecule and uh, boron and fluorine fluorine is more electronegative so that three bond movements are get cancelled because of the 120 degrees angle so the resultant dipole movement is equal to zero you can check the ch4 it is tetrahedral in the tetrahedral all four bonds are going to be cancelled like this carbon to hydrogen carbon to hydrogen carbon to hydrogen carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen so the resultant dipole moment is going to be zero similarly ccl4 also gives the same geometrical structure as it is ch4 so let's talk about the ccl4 in this case the chlorine is more electronegative chlorine and chlorine and chlorine and chlorine so in this way the chlorine is going to pull the electrons out So the resultant dipole moment is going to be zero. Let us talk about what about uh, the other structure like essential to or SO2 you can take one more example. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur and double bond O and oxygen. So the oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. As a result of this, it comes like this dipole moment in this way. So the resultant dipole moment is not equal to zero. So, like that the bond is polar and non-polar is decided on the basis of the resultant dipole moment. If the resultant dipole moment is zero, this is said to be non-polar. If the resultant dipole moment is not equal to zero, it is said to be non-polar, right? So, let us talk about the compare the dipole movements of NH3 and NF3. In the NH3 and NF3, nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen and it is a lone pair so the hydrogen and nitrogen nitrogen is more electronegative therefore the bond movement is in this way bond movement in this way and bond, mo bond movement in this way and the lone pair also has a lone pair movement you can say the direction of the bond movement and the lone pair movement the lone pair movement is added with the bond movement so there is an addition in the movement of the electron flow whereas uh, NF3 nitrogen and the fluorine fluorine is more electronegative than nitrogen so that the bond movement between nitrogen and fluorine is coming outward as compared to the lone pair movement of this NF3 so there is a opposition in the movement of the electron flow that is the reason why you can check the resultant dipole movement of this ammonia is 1.47 resultant dipole movement of the NF3 is 0.24 I want to say here dipole movement of of course NHE3 is greater than dipole movement of NF3. This is very very important point as far as the NCRT based neat type of questions you can expect it here. And also you can say dipole movement in the case of cis and trans isomers. Let us talk about uh, uh, dichloroethene cis isomer the chlorine and the carbon 
bond movements are in the same side so that you can say two bond movements are in the same side resultant dipole movement is not equal to zero this molecule has some polarity so this molecule is said to be polar whereas in the case of trans isomer in this case of trans isomer you can check it this chlorine and carbon bond movement is opposing to this carbon and chlorine bond movement so when they oppose in the opposite directions and it is going to cancel it it is going to be zero it is said to be non polar so in the organic chemistry also this dipole movement is extremely connected so that you can decide their behavior and the polarity and the physical and the chemical properties are based on this dipole movement and also percentage of ionic character can be calculated based on dipole movement and the difference in the electronegativity it is a simple trick i just want to give you to give the percentage of ionic character can be calculated taking the observed dipole movement upon theoretical dipole movement into 100 so what is observed dipole movement that is experimentally identified what is the theoretical that what we expect you can calculate it so i can say experimental dipole movement upon calculated dipole movement into 100 so based on that you can expect a question in the neat examination on ncert based you can see a question a bond length of hydrogen chloride is 1.1275 angstrom minutes and the charge conversion is given here and if the dipole movement that is experimentally observed it is 1.02 d by and then hcl is various options are given so let us directly calculate the percentage of ionic character when you calculate the percentage of ionic character that is experimental dipole movement upon calculated dipole movement into 100 in that it is 1.03 is equal to 1.03 into 10 power minus 18 es cm and bond distance is going to be 1.275 into 10 power minus 8 cm if we just substitute here we are going to get 17% ionic character but when you check this none of the option indicates the percentage of ionic character rather if it is a 17% ionic character it is going to be 100 minus 17 that is going to be 83% covalent character is coming so that 83% is going to be the answer like that you can crack questions from the ncert based neat examination questions from this topic and hope you enjoy today's class please like and share and subscribe thank you very much thank you